Hi, welcome back to my floss tube channel. My name is Phoebe and this is a YouTube channel about cross stitch. Occasionally I will have some needlepoint on here to chalk about and some um, crochet, but not today. Today we're just going to be talking about cross stitch. So I'm just going to chat with you about everything that I've been enjoying stitching on in the last two weeks. I have usually about two episodes a month. You can look for updates from me. You are more than welcome to hit that subscribe button and follow along on my stitchy journey. I'm also on Instagram at moonshinestitchery.com. If you're interested in any of the other stuff that we're doing around here, we have family vlogs on my main channel, which is also where I talk about nail polish. That is what I do for work. I own a nail polish brand, so you'll occasionally hear me talking about that as well. And all that kind of information will be in the description bar below, along with all of the projects that I'm talking about today, so you can look down there for any of that information if you'd like to. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with whips. I was listening to the lovely Lauda this morning from I Stitch Birds question mark. I just love her. She is like listening to some delightful ASMR for me, except it doesn't, like you're usually a person who really likes ASMR, or it kind of gives you the creepy crawlies on the back of your neck. Like, you know those videos where there's like all these wooden beads in this water cauldron and they're like scooping the wooden beads and everything's like clicking together? That actually drives me up the wall. I'm not actually a person that likes ASMR that much. Um, however, I could listen to Lauda all day long, all day long. She is such a peaceful, calming presence. Plus, when I listen to her, this is why I started thinking about this in the first place, it just reminds me about how much I love floss tube. Before I found this community, I always was a solitary stitcher. I still don't have anyone that lives local to me that I stitch with, but I do have friends that I stitch with online. I've met up with a few people, but also floss tube, I get to experience the joy of others in something that I've taken joy in my entire life and find peace in. And I get to experience that through another person's um, love and through their words and their excitement. And it just feels so good. And sometimes I sit here and I think about what it was like before I found this community and how I just never had anyone to share this with before and how it just makes me so happy to have that now. And, you know, listening to Narissa and Lauda and Lizzie the Stitcher, um, they're all down there in um, Melbourne. And I believe that I, th I think Lizzie and Narissa are from New Zealand, but just like so far across the globe from me and getting to feel so close to others in this world through our mutual enjoyment of this activity. And it just, it's made me so happy. So it makes me continuously so happy. So I hope that you are able to find joy in my joy in stitching today. I hope you're having a great day. I hope that you've been doing well. We are back to school here. Um, I live in Utah in the United States. I live out kind of in the country and, um, our school started back up, so my kids have had a little over a week of school, and it, they are all very happy to be back regulated on their normal schedule. And mom is doing much better, too, now that she's not driving everyone everywhere to all the different things to try to keep them busy instead of fighting from the summertime. It also seems like it's finally going to cool off, and we're going to have some f good fall coming up, so I'm very excited about that. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some whips. Whip stands for works in progress. So I'll be sharing with you everything that I was stitching on the last couple weeks. I wonder if I have glasses and dentations. I just got home from playing the organ at church. And um, after this, I have a stitchy Zoom with my friends Kim from Contented Needleworker Kim and Heidi from Whips and Kits. We're gonna stitch on Louisa Barney. I'm very, very excited about that from Riflet de Soie. And we get to listen to Kim chat about how she went to the attic recently to her, um, I, I can't ever keep the different um, meetups at the attic straight. There's, I mean, actually any of them, 
you hear about all the different names and I can't keep straight what they are, but I know that everybody met up and had fun and hopefully had some really delicious stitchy time together and just filling their cups, their friendship cups and their stitchy cups. So, okay, that's a lot of chatting. For me, usually on this channel, I just jump right in, but I'm just filled with love for this um, craft and I just wanted to share. So, let's talk about whips. The first whip that I want to talk about is my Two Strands a Day project, and that is Mirabilia Garden Prelude. Look at how she is coming along. So I put two strands of floss in this, which is actually four strands because I'm stitching this two over um, two on 32 count white shell natural, which is the called for fabric. This is Garden Prelude from Mirabilia. So I have been doing um, a strand of over one on all of her skin, and then I switch it up and I do, that's my one strand, and then I'll do it, um, the second of my two strands, I'll do somewhere on her dress. So all of the over one is done now. So she's really coming out. I haven't done any of the back stitching so that you can see her face really taking shape or anything, but all of the over one is in there. So I've just been loving this so much. I usually get this out if I'm gonna do any kind of like morning stitching. I will do this at the first part of my stitching for the day and I've been really, really enjoying it. Mirabilia is such an aesthetically pleasing stitch. Um, just the designs are so beautiful. All the flosses that you get to work with are so beautiful. Mine is a combination, I'm using all the called for. It's a combination of specialty silks plus DMC. And so, um, yeah, it's just a really, really fun stitch. And so you're, you've seen this recently a lot on my channel. You're gonna continue seeing it because I will two strand stitch this a day until it is finished. So I've had success doing that on two other projects so far in 2024, and I'm gonna continue it with this one, which is, this is my oldest whip that isn't, um, you know, of course it's not finished if it's a work in progress. So this is my oldest whip currently. And so we will continue watching that move along. The next whip I wanna talk about is She Sights a Bird from uh, Blackbird Designs. This, it was a nearly a finish. I didn't get quite enough stitchy time on it yesterday to finish before I needed to film today. If this looks strange to you, I missed a stitch in this cat when I was outlining it at some point. So I just shifted it all up by one stitch. So like the bird's legs are slightly shorter but I don't think you're really gonna be able to tell. But if it does look like it's not 100% square, that's why, because it won't be now. So this is number three in the Loose Feathers series from Blackbird Designs. They pretty much all use these same blues and golden neutrals. And this one's almost done. So you'll probably see a finish on this very soon, if not next week. Um, I could, of course, just put this back away till the next time it gets um, randomly rolled, which is why it came out this time. I rolled it with you guys in, in my plans section. So, I mean, really, I just need to pull this down and then I need to, there's a tiny bit of back stitching on this cat. I need to fill that guy in and it will be done. So, yeah, I love that series. So this is number three. I plan on doing all of them. Oh, this is stitched on a piece of 32 count um, even weave that I over dyed and I'm gonna stitch them all on 32 count one over two to give that more sparse coverage. And I'm using all the call for flosses. The next work in progress I have is the project that I pull out on the 21st of every month. This is Fractor Flowers by Kathy Barrick. And this is a project that my daughter Honor picked out for me to stitch on her birthday of the month each month. So on the 21st I stitch on this. And I got a good amount of progress done this time. All of this is new, everything from here over. And I have just really been enjoying it. So this is a piece of fabric that I over dyed. And if you're ever interested in a piece of fabric that I am stitching on, most of the things that I stitch on are pieces that I've dyed. Um, I am gonna be starting to offer linen and I will have more info for you on that in an upcoming video. Um, but I just, I really love, I love dyeing linen and um, I wanna make these colors available to you if you're interested in them. So um, I'm doing one over two on this 40 count and I'm using half and half called for. So I had 
um, about half of the MPIs that Kathy called for and then I put in some colors from my stash like the deepest green um, I didn't have that shade so I was a member of the MPI monthly floss um, whatever it's called club <laughs> on top knot stitcher for a while nope on a fat quarter shop so I had amassed a little collection of MPIs and I happened to have them so this is the Fractor Flowers from Kathy Barrick, and I'll stitch on this the 21st of every month until it is finished. Okay, so this project is the project that I spent the majority of my stitchy time in the last two weeks. It felt like stitching on, which is why I have less whips this time than I maybe usually have. So I am one part behind on this Teresa Kogut hometown sal that she has for her tier four Patreon, pa patrons on Patreon. And so this month we actually got this section, this rectangle here that's missing. But this month, starting on the 15th, I started on this number seven section. And this was a really fun, colorful section. I loved all the houses I was working on, but it just felt like it took me forever. Maybe I just didn't have a ton of stitchy time on those days, or I don't know what, but I think I spent like five whole days on this rep versus I feel like I can usually do one of these parts in like two days. It is pretty stitch heavy, but it just took me a while this time. So here's how my hometown sal is looking. Let me know if you're stitching this as well. This is gonna be a whole two year sal, so it's gonna be a long, tall town. So, very exciting. I am really enjoying it. So again, this is a piece of even weave that I over dyed, and I'm using um, completely my own conversion on this piece. I just pulled a whole bunch of flosses from Stash to just kind of liven it up a little bit and to give it a little bit more interest for me when I'm stitching. So I'm doing, again, one strand over two on 32 count. I will do anything to get away with doing two strand stitching. I just don't like it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a more sparse primitive look. And that is what I prefer most of the time. So there's that. So I was thinking that in plans, the two projects that we drew last time were She Sights a Bird and this Happy Halloween from Sue Hillis. But then I also have um, my Red Cardinals from Al Forrest. So I don't know. Now I'm confused at what I did. But anyway, I stitched on this. So this is a piece of um, pumpkin from Fiber on a Whim. This is 36 count. I'm stitching one strand over two. This was the project that really taught me that, like, why am I doing two strands on stuff? I need to just do one strand. So this is actually a restart because I'd been doing two and I hated it. It was really full and hard to pull the floss through. So what did I do this time? Um, I did this moon and um, I filled in some more of the car front over here. I did back stitching on the tire. Um, looks like I did, a, nope, wait. Yeah, I did a little back stitching on that tire. And I think I pulled whatever this thing is up. Oh, there's going to be a big headstone here, I think. And so I did a little bit here and there. I stitched on this on the 13th. So I did some dark stitching on the 13th. And um, yeah, this project's getting close to a finish. So there is a big line, sorry, that goes under the truck. And then there's, it says Happy Halloween under it. And so I'm trying to decide if I want to write out Happy Halloween in there or if I just want to do the line so it looks like the truck's driving on a road and leave it. Because I don't know that it needs the Happy Halloween. Because, yeah. And it's just more fallish and it doesn't have to be Halloweenish. You know? What do you think? Should I leave out the Happy Halloween? Let me know your thoughts. So that is getting close to finish. This is using the called four DMCs, um, which are super, super great to stitch with. And 36 count, one over two, Sue Hillis Designs. 
Okay, second to last one. This is my Red Cardinals from Alforce Designs. This is stitched on a very light, um, well actually it looks much lighter on camera than it is in person. It's kind of like a medium olive. This is called Historic Green. So um, Al Forest Embroidery, their flosses that they do with their kits are just these sumptuous, beautiful shades, but I didn't want to pay the price point for it. So I kitted this up for myself. This was one of the first things that I ever kitted up myself. And I kitted it up with a bunch of dinky dyes. And I'm enjoying this more. However, I've had a little bit of a love-hate with this project for probably a year now because I just feel like it almost looks like I primmed out the reds too much and when you look at the original design, the cardinal red shades are much more pronounced and these are, I picked some like kind of brownie reds for this piece, all except for this red which I picked not like being sure about where it was going to be on the design and thinking it was more going to be in the birds it's it's not so i think it actually is going to be in this big bird that's going to come over here but anyway my point being i've kind of been for the last year trying to decide if i actually want to finish this piece but i do want to finish it and i'm liking it more the more i get into it but like when i was here i almost quit i was just like eh, it's not red enough it's not red red you know there's plenty of reds in here but um they were brown reds so anyway so this week i ended up figuring out that i when i went to go put this in i figured out that this basket was not correct um when i was putting in this greenery i was like that's not gonna fit and i had done the basket i'd been like one stitch off or something so i had to frog out all of this so a lot of my stitching on this this week was frogging but then I put it all back in I put in all the green and then this is all new and that but not a ton of new stuff this time because I ended up having to pull out that whole basket but sometimes like in my she she sights a bird that is hard to say sometimes I'll be like oh I made a mistake but that's just gonna be like the special thing for this project because it's mine that's fine but I really thought for this that basket was gonna look strange if it wasn't as full as it should be so I decided that I should pull it all out so this is some fabric and flare 40 count historic green that I'm stitching on which is a beautiful printed green that I got from Stitchery Express and so I'm stitching one strand over two with a whole bunch of dinky dies if you would like my conversion for any project I'm working on you can always message me at moonshine stitchery on instagram or you can leave me a comment down below whatever you like so there's that okay so now my last work in progress sampler september and back to school sal is coming up starting in september very soon so this is my back to school slash sampler september stitch from last year and this is Big Anne from Shakespeare's Peddler, or Anne Dale, excuse me. It's monikered Big Anne in the community by some, because it's huge. And if you would like to see somebody who has done a ton of work on this, go see Narissa's Stitching Lifestyle and just go see her anyway because she's a fave. So anyway, Heidi and I were stitching on this last Sunday. I only stitched on this for that day. Um, so I really didn't do that much, but we were stitching on this while we were Zooming and we were catching up. And so what did I do? I I don't even know. I feel like I pulled this green zigzaggy, the hexagonal zigzag. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Trapezoids? It, looked like, it looks like trapezoids. Um, I pulled that out and then I filled in more of this motif here. And that's pretty much it. Heidi is doing the entire borders the entire I was gonna say the entire border but all of the borders before she gets into the meat and I just can't I'm so, I'm so impatient and I just want I just want to stitch on what I want to stitch on I mean she wants to stitch on the border so she's stitching on what she wants to stitch on too but I guess I am always so excited to get to dessert before I finish my dinner <laughs> so I jump in and I start stitching because that makes it more enjoyable for me but she is getting she always gets a big kick out of finishing the border and getting it to meet up and just being epic that way so 
Um, yeah, this is a piece of 40 count that I over dyed. It is a very pale green. So this is my sheet for Andale, and so I'm stitching one count over, uh, one floss over two. I am using the called for silks, I think. It's a mix of um, Soie d'Alger and MPIs, and there's a few like Gloriana's or something in there. So, yes, actually called fours. And I'm loving it, but it's very slow going. So last year, on September 1st, I started my back to school project, which was this. It's a project, it's a sal that started by Lauren, the New Hampshire stitcher. And um, let's just go ahead and get into plans because I am going to be this September 1st starting this project from Stacy Nash. I'm very, very excited about it. I'm still in the process of kitting it up with flosses from Stash. And I saw this project when I was at Country Sampler with Heidi over the summer and just fell in love. And I was like, that huge project right there is gonna be my back to school sal. So, um, yeah, very, very excited. So that's segueing us into plans. I don't have any haul, so um, might as well just get going into plans. So for the for sample September, one year I actually did stitch on exclusively samplers in September, but I ended up feeling sad by the time I got to October that I didn't have enough time to stitch on my October fall Halloweeny kind of projects. So I'm I don't do exclusively samplers anymore in September. Um, but I will stitch on the back to school sal every day. That will be my two strands a day. So I will not be stitching on Marabilia next month. Ah, oh, that feels sad. Maybe I'll have two two strands a day projects. I don't know. But um, I will be doing two strands a day on that every day. So I am excited for that. So that'll kind of be my sampler September. And the back to school rolled into one in September. But I plan to do lots of autumnal stitching as well. Speaking of autumnal things, I know energy drinks are not good for you. But this witch's brew drink, I'm not a coffee drinker. So this is my pumpkin spice. <laughs> it's so good and it makes me feel like... Halloween time is here and I'm very happy about that. Okay, so for plans, I talked to you about the things that you'll definitely see progress on in the next video, which will be in two weeks. And um, so I have certain things that I stitch on certain days of the month. Speaking of which, the day that I'm filming this on Sunday is the 25th. So I will pick a Christmassy project and you'll see pro progress on that in the next two weeks. Um, well, let's see, maybe I'll roll one on my wheel. I don't know, so I have yet to pick that, but I will. I'll probably, at the time I'm editing this, put a picture up here of what I've chosen. So then on the 30th, I will be stitching on Blackberry House, which you've seen for a long time by Plum Street. I am probably about halfway done with this project, um, maybe. I really love it. I'm stitching it on some 40 count. I'm using all the called for gentle arts flosses and loving it. But the 30th of September is when my fourth baby, my daughter Joy, she was born. And so that's the project that she chose for me to stitch on her birthday of the month. So I will be stitching on that. Then on the 31st, I will pick something for dark stitching. And so by now when I'm editing it, I will have picked this. And um, that is what you will see progress on in the next video. So then on, let's see, on the 4th of September, I we have a family barbecue to go to on the 2nd for Labor Day. I'm very excited. I get to see a whole bunch of my cousins that I haven't seen in a while. So that'll be so fun. Um, on the 4th, I'll stitch on my patriotic piece, which is this one here. And this is... Um, our full offerings Americana sailboat sampler. Gorgeous, striking piece. And then on the seventh, I'll stitch on my seaside stitches from Jeanette Douglas. That was my new birthday start this year on the 7th of August. So it's only been, it's only come out one time, so there's like almost nothing done on it. But um, I will put some progress into that on the seventh. And then by then it'll be time for my next stitchy update. So those are all of the specific projects you will see 
along with my back to school cell. And then I use two different generators to help me pick additional progress on, um, that help me get additional progress on some things that I wouldn't maybe naturally think of. So the first thing I do is pick a project from my 2024 mania. So here's all my mania pieces. And so I'm going to generate a number. Whoop. So number one, oh my gosh. Okay, so She Sights Bird is definitely going to get finished before um, next episode. In fact, I'll probably just finish that, that up tomorrow morning since today I will be doing Christmassy stitching. So, yay. I'll have a finish to share with you next week. Um, okay, and the next thing, I pull up my Tiny Decisions app. And I learned about this app from Pam and Steph on their channel. Just keep stitching. Just keep stitching. Just keep stitching. Um, Tiny Decisions app. My phone is so distracting because there's so many things to look at that my brain can't focus on it. Okay, so all my whips are in here. And then it should block out the space after it's been clicked on. So, all right, I'm going to pick again because I will already be stitching on that. That's Blackberry House by Plum Street Samplers. And I will be stitching on that. Oh my gosh, okay. That is no longer a project. I finished up the one Harry Potter gnome I was doing and gave it to my brother. Okay, so this will be the Carriage House, or is it Kathy Barrick? I think it's Carriage House. Um, Riley Harbor, which looks like this. So I will put some progress into that, which is great because I haven't got that out. Maybe even since I started it. I don't know. So, yay. Very excited. Okay, so those are my plans. Um, I have a few things that I, like, really, really want to start very soon. So I want to talk about those next. The first thing that I would really love to start is this series from Summer House Stitchworks. Um, Faith, Hope, I'm trying to remember what the other in the series is, but I would really love to start them. I feel like they're very striking and beautiful, and I would love to just have them all out together um, in display just all the time. So I really love this project. I don't know when I will be starting any of these things. Now I'm going to have record of this in this video, and when next time I'm like, what is it I wanted to start? I can reference this, but anyway. So that is... Definitely something I want to do soon. Not that I need another Teresa Kogut start, but she has like five things that have come out in the last year or two that I just have really been dying to start, but I need to have a finish on something else from her. I need to finish Foxy Thomas. But this one here, Wisdom, is calling to me. Ah, uh, tis not fruitful to lift up, to lift one up by belittling another, love one another. And the colors, are so beautiful and I want to have this hanging in my house and I really would love to just start this ASAP because if you never start it, I think Heidi Stitching Faye says, if you never start it, you're never gonna finish it. I forget, but a, bun a bunch of people say something similar to that, I'm sure. This, who just finished this that I just saw? Do, 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 do. <gasps> It was um, Jordan, the tattooed stitcher. I love, Jordan, I love you. Um, she just finished this and it looks incredible and I really, really wanna start this. This is Birds of a Feather by Blackbird Designs. Maybe I deserve a new Blackbird start because I recently finished, or I will <laughs> in a second, I'm gonna finish She Sights a Bird. <laughs> Maybe I need to start this. So yeah, really, really excited for that. Okay, so this, is so similar, well, a lot of things are similar to Lisa Barney. So I probably don't need to start this, but I really want to, and it's calling to me. And this is the EF, 1864 EF sampler. It looks like this every time. I have all these things like saved on my phone so that I'm looking through them all the time. And every time I'm looking at this, I'm just like, just finish the Louisa. Just, just work on Louisa instead, which finish it. Who am I kidding? I don't know if I'll ever finish it. Um, but this project is so beautiful and I really want it hanging up on my wall. I have three more 
huge projects that I would love to start. All of these things I got when I was in Wisconsin with Heidi. This project, sorry for the glare, this is a hat sampler. This is called Jane Bond 1724. I just, I'm so attracted to the stitching style in this long band sampler. And I can't say that I've seen anybody stitching on this, but if you know of anybody who's got progress on this and want to send me to their um, socials or anything so I can take a look, but... I really want to start that. I would love to start this. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is this was almost my back to school sal. This is English Garden from Samplers Not Forgotten. And it is huge and up on the wall in Country Sampler. And it's so stunning. <sighs> I wouldn't put it in a big gilded frame. But I love it so much. And that bird reminds me of the bird in Sword in the Stone. Okay, last but not least, I really want to start this. The Anne McFarland Sampler 1827 from The Wishing Thorn. I love it so much. This is giving me California Coast vibes, the missions on the coast, and it's making me think of Hitchcock Vertigo, and I'm really, really into it. Ochre. So, that is everything I would like to start if I had all the time in the world to stitch. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think when I had a new start recently. I've been pretty good lately, but I am having one on September 1st, so. So that is all of the stitching chat that I have for you. I'm now gonna talk about books, so if you're not interested, I will see you in two weeks and happy stitching until then. So I think, I think not too many books to chat about today because I was finishing up those two trilogies I was talking about at the end of last book. So the first one is The Assassin's Apprentice in the Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb. I finished the first three books about Fitz and some of the trilogy I loved and some of it, especially the first two thirds of the third book, I was like, it was very, it was a constant struggle to not put that book down and just decide I wasn't gonna finish it. And then there was so much stuff jammed into the last couple hours, it was crazy. But, oh boy, I have very mixed feelings about that series. First of all, it is a lovely story. You start with the man when he is a boy of six years old. He gets basically this adopted father because he's the bastard in a kingdom. He's one of the king's grandsons, but he can't be really acknowledged because he's not legitimate. But the king keeps him close and he becomes an assassin's apprentice to serve the king. A bunch of the story is really nice, but a lot of the magic system is really hard to, it's just hard to get into because it's not that well explained and you just have to like be okay with them being like, being all of a sudden, oh, I did this because the skill is this, 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 this. And it's not like explained or it doesn't really make sense with why they said no, 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 like a chapter back and then all of a sudden now it's just like, yes. I know that's very vague. One of the things that is really cool about this book is in the magic system, the person basically um, has telep telepathy with people and animals, and so that is interesting. Um, but, and a few of the characters I really like, but compared to my other favorite series, Red Rising, and all of the Brandon Sanderson books basically, but Miss Born and Storm Stormlight Archive, you just, the book isn't as fulfilling and the pacing has issues. So, I read the first three, they were free on Audible for my Audible Plus, but I don't think that the super slow parts were tolerable enough for me to be like, okay, but the good parts are so good. Like if I were gonna do it again, I might not read it because some of the slow parts were really difficult. However, a complete opposite side of the page from that, I finished the RF Kuang series. The last book was The Burning God, so it's the Poppy War trilogy. 
And so I think it's the Poppy War, the Dragon Empire, and the Burning God. And this, I've been talking about this with you for a while because I was reading all three books with my brother. And this narrator is so good. She keeps you totally enthralled the entire time. Totally different magic system. This time she's like the firebender, like from Avatar, kind of. Um, it's a woman who aspires to be a warlord, basically, which, you know, you don't read books that, about women that try to be warlords. And she actually um, has a lot of success. There is a lot of, basically, all three books are about war. So you're getting so much description of war. And she has a lot of really, there's a lot of really big downs in the books for all the characters. But then you have times when they have really big successes. But it's a book that really makes you think, like, about people's struggle for power. And it's a book about classism and racism. But it was also really beautiful and very well told. The narrator was just like probably one of the best narrators I've ever listened to on Audible. So I highly recommend if you want to start a new trilogy, there's basically zero spice in that book or in the Farseer trilogy. Um, but the Poppy War trilogy does have a lot of adult language. So that's one only one thing to know about that book. And also descriptions of wartime tragedy. There's a lot of those. So there's a little bit of trigger on that. Um, another book that I read recently is called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, and I give this one a 4.5. Uh, the only thing that took it down from a five-star read for me was the fact that the narrator was just, she was only adequate, and I really was hoping that she would be um, much more akin to the narrator from the Poppy War trilogy. That being said, it's a really beautiful story of friendship. You have these two people who are now adults and you're getting some jumps back in time and you know that they've been through some really tough stuff that made them not be friends for two different chunks of their life, but they were video game designers together. So you get a lot of discussion about video games and the process of that and then, you know, different aspects of fame and tragedy and depression and a lot of really relatable things happening in this book that is about friendship between mostly three people and um, I really liked it. I really, really liked it. So there's that. The last book that I have to talk about, I only just started. This is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse and I believe it takes place in kind of um, I think it's supposed to be uh, like Machu Picchu um, kind of civilization. Um, there's these different religious factions and there's, there's a number of different characters that you're jumping between their stories and then they're all going to weave together. Kind of like the Priory of the Orange Tree had that going for it. So um, I like it so far. But I'm not far enough in to like really be getting a really good feel for it. Luckily, this is a buddy read for me too, so I can bounce off um, my buddy and ask about like, wait, what's happening? Who's this character? There's just a lot going on. So I will update you in the next one what I think about that book. But pretty much everything that I read, unless I see it on like Audible Plus, and I'm like, oh, I've heard of that book and it's free. So I read it. I let you know if that's the case. Otherwise, I am reading books that came highly recommended from either personal sources or different YouTube book talk people that I follow. So, um, yeah. That's going to wrap up my book chat. I hope you had a fun time hanging out with me today. I hope I brought you a little bit of joy, a little bit of relaxing time just hanging with me. And I hope that you have a lot of stitchy time in the next couple weeks. Sending a big hug from me to you. And I will see you back very soon. Take care until then. Bye.